Hello everyone, today Scorcher Toys at AnyMoon.com is taking a look at the Hong Kong distribution exclusive Dark Gold VF1S from Kits Concept, released in August 2019 for an MSRP of about 115 US dollars. This is the second release in Kits Concept's KC Collectible 172 scale series, and if this is your first time hearing about the line, then you should check out my thorough review of their first VF1S Foca release. While this release isn't exclusive, if you like what you see here, you can find the regular releases at Big Bad Toy Store. Shop by clicking my link in the comments below, and you'll also help this channel out in the process. This toy comes in a gray outer shipper box made of a fairly sturdy cardboard that looks reasonably attractive. Inside you'll find the darker retail box made of thinner cardboard with a nice matte finish which does a good job sticking to the theme of this release. You'll also notice a big sticker on the box that lets you know you have one of only 660 units produced. This box is much simpler than the original retail release which featured custom artwork and a window on the back of the box but works just fine for my needs. Inside the box you'll find exactly the same contents of the original release. The pilot is already tucked in the cockpit. In the first tray you'll get the toy and a gun with a detachable gun strap, a heat shield that you'll need to install, four sets of TV style missiles, two intake fan covers, three pairs of fixed post hands, three cavity fillers, one for each side and one for behind the head. In a second tray you'll find a display stand consisting of a base and an arm as well as five batteries for the light up gimmicks. And behind the tray you'll find instructions, no need for stickers here. Here is the regular release, here is the dark gold version. When you first get the toy it doesn't have the heat shield installed, it doesn't have cavity fillers on. If you want to see how to do that stuff check out the video review of this toy over here. One of the things I was really impressed of when I pulled out the dark gold version was that all of the really fine detail work that was done on the original release, they, I mean, they really went nuts on the painted on detail. And it all, for the most part, came over to the dark gold version. And in fact, there are some details like this little mark underneath the landing gear door that I didn't even see on the first release. So you might have thought that, oh, they're gonna do a black toy, they're gonna skip a lot of that detail. Not so. Even the no step signs on the wing have come over in dark gold. So very impressive painted on detail. I said that about the first release and I'm gonna echo it on this dark gold version. The only knit that I would have is there some of this dark gray here and down here. And unless you have super bright lights like I do for this video review, you're not gonna see that. It's just gonna look more black. But for some of you, that's probably not a detraction anyways because it's a pretty sexy scheme. This toy comes with a gun. The gun is darker as you would expect as this is the dark gold version of the release. You can stow the gun on the arm in bat Troid or bat Lloyd mode, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but it only kind of hangs onto one arm. So if I try to put it on the left, it doesn't work. It's going to work on the right arm. So there's that. The gun also has an extension gimmick and you have to remove the handle for fighter mode or for stowing in Batroid, Bat Lloyd. It just kind of plugs in like so, but that's a little bit awkward. I'm not a huge fan of it. Then you have this strap that plugs in as well, it just kind of plugs into the front. You gotta pop it in and it plugs into the back. So it's a nice little aesthetic plus there. You will note that this gun is darker in both the gun strap and the gun itself than the regular release. There's also a panel underneath where you can put batteries in. Unfortunately, my screw is stripped. I cannot get that battery cover off to save my life. But if you could, you'd be able to insert batteries and then get this cool light up gimmick. And it's also, I know it's hard to see what the light's on, but this little red lens on top is also lighting up. So that's pretty cool. The integrated hands on this toy are a little awkward. Here they are, just a little long in the fingers. Now on my first release, I did have one thumb that was very loose and rattling. My build quality on these hands is great. I'm sure it was just a little one-off issue I had on that first one. So I can take one of these fixed post hands and note that even the fixed post hands have some nice detail work at the knuckles, that spruce them up, make them look a little cooler. And then I can squeeze the handle into this hand 
like so, get that finger on there. Come on. And then it will grip that gun super securely. I can plug it into place and it's a very firm plug-in. But now that toy with these optional hands, which are much bigger, here's the original hand here. You can see we have a definite size improvement there and it helps the overall look. And I gotta say overall, this thing looks pretty sharp in this mode. Now, one complaint that I had on the first one, continue to have backpack angle, a little outward there, uh, but the hinge is stiff enough and it's staying up, so that's good. The other complaint I had on the first one is the chest doesn't really feel like it locks down as much as you would hope. Now, the hinges on this one are pretty stiff, so it's less of a, an ordeal. On my white toy, it's pretty loose. But even so, once you realize that that thing moves, you just, when you handle it, don't touch it, and it's much less of an issue. Articulation on this toy is really solid, so if you like the paint scheme, you wanna get it into a nice pose, it's gonna work with you to make that happen. You got a ball jointed head, you can move the lasers on that head independently, up, down, left, right, cock, left, right, all good stuff there shoulder you can spin all the way around at and you can come out away from the body there's that twist point right below the shoulder and super good double jointed elbow you've seen the hands and the ball joint and the articulated hands then moving down you don't have a waist but you do have the ability to rock there's a ball joint there you're going to run into the wings pretty quickly but you do have the gear walk joint to save you if you do or you can open the wings up and come way up, way back. And you also have the ability to pivot outward. If you bring the legs forward a little bit, they won't run into the nose cone as much. And then you can come out even further, which is great. You have a twist point at the knee. The knee itself, fairly limited. There is an extension there, but it's very minor. Gets you to about 90 degrees. The feet do have an extension to them and they come back and forward. Not much on the right left action, but they're not really gonna inhibit your fun. You're gonna be able to pose this toy lots of great ways and take advantage of that sweet paint scheme with some sweet poses. The paint scheme still looks good in guardian mode. You might notice that these intakes are pretty big up here. Some people might not like that. That's just part of the mold. The backpack does still stick up. And another thing that happens with the backpack is it's pretty easy to get the fins askew, the vertical stabilizers that are folded over. Uh, there's enough slop in that hinge that they can move around on you a little bit. Uh, the wings in guardian mode tuck right up against the shoulder. So if you try to have it straight up and down, you're gonna lose that point of articulation. So a better thing to do is to bring the arms forward. Now the knees and gear walk joint on these toys continue to be a little problematic for me. Uh, you can see the toy is a little crooked right now. Uh, one leg wants to be in a different position than the other leg. And I'm sure with enough fiddling, I can get it to look pretty symmetrical, but it uh, hasn't proved easy to do. So that's a little bit of a bummer. Now, some pluses versus the first toy I got, my Foker version of this. The canopy on that toy is pretty sloppy. So here's the toy. If I turn it upside down, usually, especially during handling, the canopy will pop up and it's not happening right now because my thumb is on it, but uh, this canopy always popping open and then the pilot figure falls right out, which ends up being problematic for me. Another issue that I have with this toy is that the gear walk, the intake here is not locking into place properly. There's a peg on the inside that I could never seem to get seated. And on this toy, both pegs, I could get them seated. You have to do that peg first before you do the exterior peg. Uh, it's not the most stable during handling. You could still pop those out, but it's doing a better job there. So stiffer canopy that fits more flush against the nose cone for me, better ability to peg in the intakes, and also this uh, section of the nose cone on this toy frequently comes unpegged, but on this toy, uh, it's been staying in a little bit better for me. So. 
it's hard to say that any of these are improvements to the mold. It might just be one toy to the next, a little bit of a QC variance. But in those respects, this toy is doing better. But again, Guardian mode itself, problematic. This toy comes with a display stand. The display stand's pretty basic. It has a pivot point towards the bottom. It only works in fighter mode, although you can kind of use it as a prop in the other modes. And you can also twist it, although it's incredibly tight, so it's almost better to pick it up and then reinsert it in that display stand base. The original toy came with this neon green display stand. It's the same display stand, but the neon green was pretty off-putting. So it was nice to see them go with a clear display stand this time around. You also have missiles that you could put on the hard points of the wings. Uh, unfortunately, removing these missiles is incredibly difficult and you oftentimes pop the hard point right off of the wing, which is a problem that remains there since the original release. If you're struggling with the display stand and attaching your toy to it, check out my previous review. I kind of go in length about that. What's unfortunate about the awkwardness of the display stand is that the toy sits on the gun in fighter mode, which would probably encourage more people to use the display stand, but then the display stand is so-so, so you're kind of caught in between. The toy itself, other than sitting on the gun in fighter mode, does this mode pretty well. Everything locks together pretty tightly. You could see I'm having a little bit of an issue with this intake in the front. Maybe you could see. Uh, but generally, you can get it back into position and it'll hold all right. Not quite as well as some of the higher end toys out there. The markings, again, fantastic. So you got like the little SDF1 there, the mode X number. You got the little hooks on there. There's a bit of panel lining and silver there. Uh, which you might think wouldn't work because it's not all over the place, but it doesn't really detract. I thought it looked pretty good. Again, you have the dark gray accents in a few places if you've got a lot of bright light on your cabinet. So all of that's pretty good. What sucks for me, and I don't know, maybe it's just this toy is not meant to have the light-up gimmick, but if you want to use the light-up gimmick, first of all, using it on the gun is super awkward because the switch is up here. So that works great in Batroid and Garewalk or Batloid and Guardian modes, but in fighter mode, it's kind of hard to turn that light on. And then for the cockpit light up section, let's hold that there. And you can see my front landing gear is not really locking into place either. But we can pull this. Now it does have integrated landing gear. They do have tires. The tires spin not very freely, but I can Hopefully pull that off. Jeez, that took a lot of effort. And the switch is right here for the light-up gimmick in the cockpit. Unfortunately, you need to put batteries in here via a screw right here. And that screw on my toy, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, has been completely stripped out. So I cannot access the battery bay to put the batteries in. So I was given batteries with the toy but there is nowhere that I can put those batteries either in the gun or in the cockpit area. So my toy does not get to use that light up gimmick at all. So I won't be showing it to you, but I do show you in my previous review. So if you're not familiar with how it's supposed to look, definitely check that out. While this toy was better than my original race in a few ways, the fact the battery compartments were inaccessible and the hard points couldn't stand the stress of removing the missiles makes this toy harder to recommend. That said, there's only one company offering this particular paint scheme, so if it appeals to you, hopefully you're armed with enough information to determine if you should make a purchase. For lots of comparisons to other toys and a more thorough analysis of the KC Collectible 1-72 scale VF1, make sure you check out my previous review and the full article on AnyMoon.com. There are more KC Collectible VF1 toys in the pipeline, so subscribe to stay in the loop. Thanks for watching.